Hi everyone. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Martin and in today's video we'll have an in-depth look at Tough Fellows, a new demo I did for the Marco Miniman drum kit for Groove Agent. As usual, it's been a great pleasure for me working on that track, but personally it meant a real big step back to the roots of my musical career actually. Because 24 years from now, I started a little studio project called Enid, and we did um, medieval black metal stuff. <laughs> and uh, we released some albums from the late 90s to the mid 2000s, let's say. And um, so my first impression when checking out the new Marco Miniman drums was, Woo! I'm gonna make metal again! <laughs> so. I now courteously invite you to join me having a closer look at this very special session. Let's have some fun! Yeah, welcome to the project! First, let me give you a brief overview of what is happening in this session. We have the orchestral colors up here. I'm using the Iconica ensembles most of the time, especially for the string section and some of the section and players for specific needs. Let me show you that here. For example, the strings ensemble low. There it is. Iconica ensembles. And let's say uh, the horns are tray above here. Iconica sections and players. I will talk about that later because we are here to focus on the new minimum drums, which are placed down here within the band folder. Apart from the guitars, actually, everything in this demo was made with Steinberg sounds. The bass comes from the Halion Library Electric Bass, a really cool and versatile companion when it comes to quickly sketch out a piece in an electrified band setup. Let's have a look at him too. Here. Electric has a really cool uh, library. I've divided the drum part in two instances of Groove Agent, as you can easily see here. One named Solo, one named Groove. I'll explain that later, just for you to know what happens here. Now we're ready to listen to the piece. Let's go! Have fun!
What I tried to do in this track was to create something like a let's say concert for drums and orchestra to in a way rethink the whole symphonic metal cliche into something that's really centered around the drums and the strings so that the two worlds of band and orchestra really melt together instead of just one being a colorful addition to the other. I've done that with this little motif at the beginning, these little five plus five notes idea. I came across this little fragment while playing with my little daughter on the swing set in the garden, and I, I and I was the guy who had to get the swing in motion over and over again. And believe me, if you're doing such repetitive things. Uh, the, the mind of a musician is striving away uh, into the, the secret gardens of music creativity <laughs> and, and then you um, get strange ideas and I suddenly had this idea, there it was, this idea that was completely rhythmical but melodic in the same way. You could easily imagine it being played by a tom-tom a hi-hat, a conga or whatever, but also by a flute, a violin or a piano. But now it's time to have a closer look at our minimum drums. I've already mentioned the two different instances of Groove Agent. And that that's just because of the fact that the drum set should be a soloist as well as a groove. Um, a, a groove craftsman, so to speak, supporting all the other instruments. What I like a lot with Groove Agent is that there are these two worlds, pattern and instrument. Let me show you that here. You see, um, pattern and instrument. While being in pattern mode helps me focusing on the form, on the groove part of the drum set. Let's have a look at that down here. Pattern mode, instrument mode again. The instrument mode enables me to play the drum set like a real drummer. And basically that's how I worked out the drum track for this piece. I had these moments when I played in things via the keyboard. And those when I checked out the different modes of the main groove, the fills, intros and endings for to find something useful for the music. I then just had to drag the MIDI down into my track and there it was, ready to be tweaked and modified to the specific needs of the music. Briefly explained, this is how I use the Groove Agent kits, which I like a lot because they have a clear definition of what you could expect from them and the handling is quite musical. Like minimum drums, right? You listen to the kit and you see, yeah, it's a prog rock metal drum kit and that's it. It's ready to use for that kind of music and that's very useful when you are on a tight schedule. And of course I know all the other cool virtual drum instruments out there. May they be sample based or on a synth basis. And of course I have my favorite drum kits in the depth of my sample palette as we all have, right? But it's cool to keep checking out new things. And Minimum Drums here is a really cool thing to play and work with. It's inspiring and versatile at the same time. The drum grooves are programmed very accurately and the preset songs are ready to use and perfect for fast sketches and inspirational workarounds. Let's have a listen to the drum track in solo mode and hear and watch in detail what's going on.
As you already may have recognized, I've simply used a preset kit, which indeed is a complete song, if you wish. Every kit comes along with a main groove and several endings, intros and fills. I took this kit and preset because I like the sound very much. It's roomy, it has some punch I like and it's not overprocessed like many other metal drum kits out there. My ears are quite tired of listening to them because they quite sound the same in so many metal productions. First things first, what I really love is the snare. It has bottom to it while still being sonically flexible and leaves some room for making music with it. The cymbals are very cool too. I like the two hi-hats, which I made some use of in the intro while within the groove mostly uh, using the normal hi-hat on the right side of the stereo field, left side from drummer position. The toms do what they do. They are not my favorite part of the kit, but they are absolutely doing their job. Lovely about the toms is that there are five of them, which really opens some possibilities. There's an additional gong tom too. An instrument which I didn't use but it's fun to experiment with. Let's have a listen to them. Toms. Okay, gong tom. It's kind of flat and deep and the really cool snare from here. <laughs> I like this this bottom sound and that is this 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 slight uh, tail at the end sound sounding like like metal. Really cool. I love it. Bass drum. Cool too. And the very cool cymbals. Really colorful and, and cutting through everything you do in the mix. China. Right. And the effects bells over here. Cool. And now I want to focus on the groove instance and briefly explain how I used the different variations of the main groove and tweaked it to the special needs of this track. At the beginning of the first main part, when the guitars come in, I've used the first variation of the main groove. I used that variation and enriched it via the doubling of the main theme on the hi-hat. Some fills and extra notes are there too, but the most important thing was to change the meter because the track works with some meter changes from 4 to 3 fourth bars. Let's have a listen to that. There's the main theme on the hi-hat. No, three and four again. New section. See? Um, totally different thing fitting the music, but still the, the original version is, um, is noticeable. Let's skip back and listen to the original groove again. And you can see how easy it is to get inspired by what Marco did in the presets and take some of that energy and create a completely new song out of it. That's the real magical thing about working with VI drummers that way. That way. If you have a good MIDI groove or you actually play or design it yourself, you will get an extremely real result. By real, I mean that it feels natural like an instrument played by an artist. Let's spend some time visiting the middle part over here. This strange little artifact that doesn't seem to be expected in this context, right? But what I had in mind with the title was to not take the whole metal thing too seriously. What I like a lot is to take some cliché and combine it with something that's absolutely not part of the cliché. I'm talking about this bass chord thing in the low strings and the low woodwinds. Let's have a look and a listen to that. So. 
Sounds familiar, right? But not so much with these particular chords. The melody then is the real stranger. It doesn't exactly fit the key and the trumpet is doubled by a theremin-like synth coming from the re uh, Retrologue 2 from Steinberg. Now let's combine the two. Now together with the strings and the woodwinds. When putting the drums back in now, you can easily hear what the drum set does and how it is still in a way part of the melody, but making some outbreaks or comments. Let's listen to that a little bit further. Focusing on one little detail at the end of the middle part brings me to the mixer section of Miniman drums, which I like very much too. You may have noticed the few snare strokes here. I will go here, you listen. <laughs> on these three strokes, I wanted to add some epic extra tail to the snare. And this is very easily achieved within the mixer page of Miniman Drums. Let's go back there. First you see the Agents tab. I don't want to get so much into detail here, so this is a just a quick overview. You have all your groups here. You can dive into all of the instruments via these tabs here. I went up to the snares and selected the snare A fader. Then I automated the AUX1 send to CC13 to control it via MIDI CC directly on the instrument track. You can see that back here. See, CC13 automates the, the AUX1 fader. The AUX tab then allows you to add additional effects to your AUX channel and I added a reverb. I want to go back to the drums. Um, here's the auxiliary tab and I've added a reverb as, you, as you've easily heard. But what's the real trick is putting an EQ in front of the reverb. I searched for a nice frequency to enhance, let's have a look at it, and later on tweaked the room to give it some boom. It's the thing with big snares that they need mid-range, not so much top end. As you can see here, I've, I've lifted up the 1K um, and, and totally kicked off the, the low end because um, it, it makes things muddy and the, the whole room sounds, sounds flat and dull and, and not, not so interesting. Big always happens in, happens in the mid-range of the frequency band. Let's listen to this little part drum solo.
And again, with a bit more pre-roll together with all of the other stuff. Funny that you don't realize this little detail while listening to the track for the first time, because this um, is an example how easy it is adding some spice to an arrangement without having to leave the instrument. As you, just to remember that we are we are in Groove Agent and doing all that stuff within this instance of Groove Agent, and this really saves some time. It's inspiring, saves time, and the sound is absolutely good, inspiring, and solid. So why we have to leave Groove Agent? Another aspect I wanted to highlight is transparency. Within a track like this, with vast guitars and a full band setup, you have to keep an eye on an intelligent arrangement. So another string set doubling the guitars doesn't help making things better. It's just a lot of mud in the mix. As you can see in the final part, the whole string section mainly focuses on playing the melody. The low section only emphasizes some important hits. Uh, let's have a look at that within the editor page here. Here are the hits, here's the, uh, the melody. What I did pushing the melody is to double it in octaves. You can easily see it here. That alone is no real big deal. It's a standard used in orchestrations ever since. The special thing I did here to make some use of both the high and the low ensembles of Iconica was to double the lower octave with the high string section as well as the low section. Result is having the, the violas combined to the cellos, giving the whole melody much more richness and body. Um, that's the thing you can easily overgo when just reading low and high, because that doesn't mean only low is for low and high is for high things, but the high ensemble contains violas, second and first violins, while the low section consists of cellos and basses. Let's listen to both band and strings separately. And um, here, here you can see in the editor, here, uh, here you can see the doubling. Right? And let's uh, spend some time listening to that separately. Here are the strings ensemble high as into to that solo and that's not really high right it's only the violas um playing it but together with a celli here they are Let's mute that for a while. See, you you can imagine the, the, the violas and just without the violas, it would sound like that. And together with the violas again. different appearance of this part again and as you can hear now uh, listening to them solo they are not that precisely played and that's the thing that I, I try to achieve while playing it very natural and not um, over quantize things because these ensembles are unnatural in their way of hitting the string quite unnaturally precise. And that's what I don't like about these large ensembles. And what I'm doing then is to 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 uh, playing them in and leaving it that way, just adjusting some sorts of um, attack. And, and then most of the time it, it fits the need of this, this melody part. Here. 
here this this little um thing at the end and but but together with all the other instruments it's exactly the way it should be one last thing i wanted to show you is this little transition synth down here it only appears twice in the song but it's importance is quite obvious obvious when playing the whole thing without it still cool and nothing's missing right but listen to the part with transition again You easily hear what an appearance the new section makes now. These little things help to make a track really stand out and push emotions forward. Let's have a brief look at how this sound was created. What is interesting about the sound is that I used my own sample of a single guitar chord in D. Let's listen to the original sample down here. Okay, that's a guitar chord in D, right? And now here's the final sound. Nice. The really cool thing about doing such experiments is that the transition doesn't sound like an artificial add-on on top of the track but it sounds like being a real part of it. The key step I took was to reverse the speed and to set the starting point shortly after the attack phase of the sound. Timed correctly, the chord sounds like a guitar taking a breath. I then combined the attack envelope with a filter. See here, the, here's, the, um, here's the attack envelope, attack time. That's quite the, the most important thing because then the sound is already over so uh, decay sustain doesn't really matter. I then combine the attack envelope with the filter to create an opening towards the impact and added some special reverb constellation to make it last a little bit longer like the release tail of a cymbal so to speak. Here is the effects page and you can see that the global reverb 100% of it goes to um, from 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 layer A goes into the the, the reverb. That's the the feed, and I did some chorusing here. And what's really cool, like like the 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 way I did it on the snare, um, no low end, a little bit of mid range, but I wanted to focus here on the top end to make it last a little bit longer throughout the the main part. Okay. That was a little walk through my demo track for the new Minimum Drums. I hope you've enjoyed the ride and we'll meet again soon. See you and uh, continue being an ambassador of whatever music you make. Bye bye.